Farmer Will Allen and the Growing Table Written by Jacqueline Briggs Martin Illustrated by Eric Shabazz Larkin Farmer Will Allen is as tall as his truck. He can hold a cabbage or a basketball in one hand. When he laughs, everyone laughs, glad to be in his crew. When he talks, everyone listens. But some say the special thing about Will Allen is that he can see what others can't see. Are they right? When he looked at an abandoned city lot and saw a huge table heaped with food, was he right? When Will Allen was a boy, bowls of peas, greens, and his favorite, lima beans with ham, covered the kitchen table. My mother often fixed enough food for 30, Will says. We never had a car or a TV, but we always had good food. He remembers people who'd come to dinner tired and drooped and leave laughing. Will's family grew most of their food. Will loved the food but hated the work. He planned to quit on planting, picking, pulling weeds, leave those Maryland fields for basketball or white shirt work. And he did. He graduated from college and moved to Belgium to play professional basketball. When a Belgian friend asked him to help dig potatoes, Will realized he loved digging in the dirt. He grew so much food that he and his wife Cindy covered their kitchen table with Thanksgiving dinner for a team of basketball friends. A new kind of farm. When Will was done with basketball, he worked a white shirt job in Wisconsin and found time to grow vegetables on Cindy's parents' land. But Will wanted his own place. He'd seen that fresh vegetables were as scarce in the city as trout in the desert. Will believed everyone, everywhere, had a right to good food. But how could Will farm in the middle of pavement and parking lots? One day, driving in Milwaukee, Will spotted six empty greenhouses on a plot of land about the size of a large supermarket for sale. He could see kids who'd never eaten a ripe tomato, never crunched a raw green bean, sitting at his table eating his vegetables. Will Allen bought that city lot. The Dirty Soil Will had a start on his table. He had the land, but the table was empty. The problem was Will's soil dirty with chemicals and pollution. He had no money for machines to dig out the bad soil for truckloads of good soil. What to do? In Belgium, Will had learned to make good soil with food garbage. They called it composting, but he needed lots of garbage. He asked his friends to save food waste, apple peels to old zucchinis. Will collected those scraps in big white buckets and dumped them into piles. He added hay, leaves, newspapers, red wiggler worms, water. Every now and then, he turned the piles to get air into the mix. Neighborhood kids stopped by to ask what he was doing. Will told them about the piles and the red wiggler worms that would help the garbage become compost. The kids came back day after day to help. Red Wiggler Worms Then, one day, bad news. The Red Wiggler crew was dying. Will and the kids studied worms for five years. They learned not to feed the worms too much. And they discovered the best menu for Red Wigglers no hot peppers, onions, garlic, lots of watermelon rinds, sweet potato scraps, molasses. Since then, the, squ the squirmy crew has stayed hard at work. Will says, 
Worm magic is what makes his farm grow. Making a bigger table, growing power. Once Will had good soil, he was ready to plant vegetables, but he didn't have much space. How could he grow enough food on a small city plot? Will Allen looked around. He saw that he had all the space from the soil under his feet to the top of the greenhouses. He hung plant baskets from the ceiling. He grew greens in buckets, greens in rows. He crowded shelves with pots of spinach, charred lettuce. He grew stacks of tiny salad sprouts and boxes, hundreds of boxes. Will added hoop houses to hold more boxes and more long rows of vegetables. He added vats of water and fish to his greenhouses. Fish wastewater grows the sprouts. The sprouts clean the water for the fish. Fish, water, sprouts work together like a three-part farm machine. He added goats, chickens, turkeys, and bees to that city farm he named Growing Power. Finding Farmers Farmer Will's work clothes are jeans and a blue sweatshirt with cut-off sleeves. He's busy from early morning to night. Still, one person could never grow all the food Will wanted to grow. Where could he find more farmers in the middle of the city? Will Allen looked around. He saw teenagers, school children, parents, grandparents. He taught them to be farmers. Then Will's table held as much as several supermarkets, thousands of pounds of food. Neighbors who live in high rises far off the growing ground came and still come to Will's farm to buy fresh vegetables, fish, or eggs. People have gone and still go to fancy restaurants to eat Will's food. But Will wanted his table to feed folks all over the world. How could he build one huge table that crossed the continent? Growing power around the world. Will thought about the problem of the world-sized table. He looked around and saw his many helpers who'd learned to be farmers. He would teach people everywhere to grow food for their own tables. Will Allen began to travel. He has crisscrossed the United States, showing others how to farm in the city. And he has taken his red wigglers to Kenya, to London, all over the world. The world has also come to his Milwaukee farm. 20,000 visitors a year tour the greenhouses, watch goats, snack on greens, and go home planning to start a farm on a city lot, rooftop, or abandoned highway. Will and the 50 million. Is Will Allen done? Never! We need 50 million more people growing food on porches, in pots, in side yards, he says. Will is always looking for new ways to make the table bigger, more schoolyard plots, a vertical farm that's five stories high, farms in empty factories or warehouses. Will Allen dreams of a day when city farms are as common as street lights and every table is covered with good food. Your table. Will Allen can see what others can't see. When he sees kids, he sees farmers. Will you be on Will Allen's crew? Will you grow vegetables for your family, your neighbors, on your porch or roof or yard? How big will your table be? Afterward. Growing power. Dear reader, eater, maybe future farmer, I am glad we are able to meet through this book. As you know, I did not want to farm when I was young, but now I love growing food that tastes good. I like to farm in all sorts of places. Sometimes I have gardens in the ground like a garden in your backyard. 
Sometimes I like to put gardens on roofs or hang my plants from hangers on small pipes. My next big project is to build a tall building. It will not be full of offices or apartments, but, with, but will be filled with lots of plants, fresh salad greens, tomatoes, and other vegetables. I'm very pleased you are learning about farming, about growing and eating good, healthy food. I hope you know that you are the key to helping people at home and around the world have better, safer, and healthier food to eat. How? One, by eating lots of fresh veggies and fruits. Two, by planting your own small garden anywhere, in your backyard or front lawn, on your porch or deck, in pots in your kitchen, or in your living room. You can even put a garden in your bedroom and grow good food for yourself and your family. Three, by starting a worm factory. That's right, I said worms, because worms are great. The secret to being a great farmer is great soil to farm in. Start a compost bin with your parents and get those worms working. Finally, I invite you to visit my Growing Power Farm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and bring your parents and friends along too. We would love to show you all the things we have growing in our greenhouses, including our livestock, the red wiggler worms. I can't wait to see what you grow. Will Allen, farmer, founder, and CEO, Growing Power Incorporated.